the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to keep it short today. I just want to give a little bit more reflection on that first line from the gospel. You are the salt of the earth. If salt loses its flavor, what can it be seasoned with? It's good for nothing but, you know, trotting the path. So Jesus is making the perfectly valid observation that effectively in the kitchen, Salt has one job, seasoning food. It does the job well, but if it has no flavor, then you might as well just use that salt for icing your driveway. Salt makes bland food better. Uh, if you have bad food, like a rotten potato, Salt isn't particularly going to help you with that. A rotten potato is a rotten potato. And if you're having a loaded baked potato, we're talking butter, sour cream, chives, bacon bits, and all that, well, frankly, you don't need salt in that situation. You need salt when you have a cooked, uh, not raw, but unseasoned potato, just, just a baked potato. Salt makes the difference between a perfectly bland, flavorless food and something that's actually kind of pleasurable. When Jesus says that you are the salt of the earth, he's addressing the fact that this is one particular job that we have as Christians, people of faith, hope, and love. We have a responsibility for those around us, those we're sharing our lives with, to elevate the bland parts of life, the, the ordinary parts of life, the things we've done a thousand times over, we can elevate those from bland forgettableness to actually something that's, that's a pleasant experience. Because repetitive things that we've done a thousand times before, they are truly a part of our daily life. If you're doing those things with people who love you, you know, people who are pleasant to be around, then it becomes a joyful part of your day. That's really what Jesus is getting at in this gospel. And just like how salt can't really fix bad food. When we have bad moments in life, like true, like true moments of grieving and all of that, no person can season that to make it neutral or good. They can make it more bearable. I completely agree that that's a possibility. But bad situations remain bad situations no matter what. And the wonderful parts of our lives, the, the true highlights of, of life, it takes a lot of work for another person to take that away from us. So again, the extremes, extreme badness, extreme goodness, they tend to exist without other people influencing them. It's the middle events. It's the neutral bland, ordinary moments of daily life. That's where unpleasant people can take a bland situation and make it miserable, and good, pleasant people can take a bland, forgettable situation and actually make it something to be thankful for and, and joyful for. And that's what it comes down to, really. So comparing that to salt, perfectly valid. But you know what? The other analogy I would add to that is music. Music absolutely can make something bland enjoyable. For instance, a, uh, a humdrum, ordinary, forgettable movie with an awesome soundtrack, well, that can be a, a memorable, inspiring 
experience. An awesome soundtrack can do wonders, absolutely. And in terms of daily life, I can think of two things in my daily life with zero music, they're actually a pain to deal with. I'm talking about cooking and driving. But if I get to play my music, cooking and driving become joyful experiences. I look forward to them. They are a pleasant part of my day, even if they're rarely going to be the best part of my day. But on the other hand, if you have bad music you can't escape from, then you're doomed. If salt loses its flavor, what good is it for? If we as Christians don't make ordinary life better for others, then something's gone wrong. If bad music is part of a situation, there is nothing that's going to undo that, I'll tell you what. Uh, number one thing on that that comes to mind, uh, it was not so long ago that my little sister was a little sister. And uh, like many children, she had a phase where she only wanted to listen to her favorite song over and over and over again. And for my sister, that song was TikTok by Kesha. That's a song that will drive a fully grown man, stark raving mad, in record time. But when driving Allison to gymnastics or whatever, nothing I can do but just grin bear it and get her to that destination as fast as possible. <sighs> Again, to circle back, you are the salt of the earth. You have the power and responsibility to make life more pleasant, flavorful, and enjoyable for those around you. You probably won't achieve that for wonderful moments in life or terrible moments in life. Those moments are generally beyond your power to influence much, maybe a little bit. But the ordinary, bland, everyday events of our daily lives, you have the power and responsibility to make life more pleasurable, enjoyable, and flavorful for those around you. That is something we need to do as people of faith, hope, and love. And if we don't do that, then something has gone wrong. We are the salt of the earth, we add flavor to that which we add, which we, to which we are added. So remember that, and also your salt of the earth and the light of the world.